Hi, Kat here for Lightwave Digital. In this video, we're going to be talking about some of the new DP kit and DP displacement tools that are being integrated into Lightwave 2025 throughout the course of this product cycle. For 20 years, Dennis Pontanier, or DP, was creating these amazing plugins for Lightwave, and we're now getting them integrated properly into the software. So to demonstrate some of these, we're going to start with a very basic subdivided plane. And we're going to go through some exercises using some of his tools and some of the native tools that go and work hand in hand inside of Lightwave to get certain things done. So right now I just have a simple subdivided plane. It's about 10 meters by 10 meters. And of course, I've got it enabled for sub patching. OK, so let's save this. And I'm going to just send it directly over to layout so that we get this subdivided plane. Now, you'll notice the object properties panel. If it's not up, you can press P to bring it up the object selected and what we get is basically this primitive tab with the geometry and then a bunch of uh, lists of different modifiers and of course you can add any modifier that you want at any point in time here but these are now restackable if you're just coming back to the software after being away for a number of years in Lightweight 2018 we got the ability to restack the order of these to anything that we want and we can insert at any time another modifier such as the motion mixer um, or pardon me, the morph mixer, uh, an MD reader, baker, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is all able to be restacked in this list. So for now, what we want is to basically put our nodal subdivision above our regular subdivision. We're going to make sure that we're working with something that's a nice option. To bring up this menu, just got to double click on the displacement. So subdivision, boom, boom. And we're going to put this to four, make sure that our render. So patch match is also four. So we're going to get engage nodal subdivision. We're going to double click this tab and we're going to be presented with this window. Now this will be probably familiar to those of you who have worked with Lightwave before where you bring up a nodal dis displacement or a texture displacement system or even a texture editor. Um, Lightwave's texture system, it doesn't just do textures. It can do displacements. It can be used in uh, the... Uh, graph editor it can do um, uh, all kinds of amazing things but because its ability to integrate both real textures like image based maps and procedural textures that can work across either of those systems it really becomes extremely powerful it's really only um, uh, understood to some people when working with this type of software how powerful this can actually be but it gets even more powerful when you have the understanding that you can mix and match how these things are integrated and are evaluated in the displacement stack. So to demonstrate this, we're going to get some procedural textures going. Now, um, I have in here the RMAN collection, which is now integrated into Lightwave 2025. And I'm going to go and grab something called uh, Wavy Water. OK, so this Wavy Water tool is part of the Man collection. If you don't know what the Man collection is, it's basically the Renderman collection inspired uh, shaders and tools. So now that we've got this up, we're going to go make sure that this is connected first. We're going to see a immediate change in the background here. Now, this is not going to cause any type of animation to take place. So we need to give ourselves some animation on this windy water or wavy water texture. So. To do that, we're going to go to the position tab, and I'm just going to go and create a keyframe at 120. I'm just going to hit enter at 120 frames, and we're going to say that it's evaluating a three meter change in distance over that course of time. Okay, and I'm just going to set my pre and post behavior for the keyframes to be linear. So no matter what, uh, this thing will just continue to play infinitely if my timeline was much longer. So for example, let's say I was at 100, 240 frames instead. Okay, so now we've got some wavy water going over top. Now this is all fine and dandy, but I want something else on top of this to help break it up. So let's go and add another one here called Windy Wave. Very similar looking pattern, but totally different procedural. Uh, to get this one in here, let's go and add the bump output from the wave of water to the windy wave, and then connect the bump output of the windy wave to the displacement input. And now we can see that it's animating back together again. But because there's no animation on this second plugin, 
uh, we need to vary that up a little bit. Now, to help this out, I'm actually going to create a null, and we're going to call this uh, windy wave reference. And in this menu, you'll see a slot called reference object, and you can reference the object itself, uh, a null, any other item that is technically an object, and we can now place that null somewhere else in the scene and based off of that offset this entire texture will be evaluated from there so let's just make sure we've got a keyframe at zero for that instead of it wandering all over the place but now we've got this texture being driven with its primary source of evaluation being wherever this null is rather than just dead center in the texture of the object so we can make some additional changes to this, of course. Um, again, let's go and uh, do an envelope on this, on the x-axis at frame 240 or frame uh, 120, and we'll just make sure that it does its thing. Uh, let's go uh, two meters on that one. Again, adjusting these in and out points to be linear. So no matter what, they're always just running in an infinity. Okay. So now that that's going on, a texture there that's being driven in two primary ways. One based off the reference of this null and also the texture being displaced or run through the uh, surface of the object. Or the geometry itself across the x-axis and you can get much more sophisticated than this and of course there are um, ways to mix and match stuff uh, change things with additional textures that you want to plug in here so let's go and uh, integrate maybe one of the um, original light wave um, textures so we'll go to 3d textures and uh, let's go and take uh, underwater it's a fun one this one i can just directly place it inside and i'm going to talk to you a little bit about what uh, some of this integration work is that's being done. Now, this particular texture is a little bit too scary right now, so we don't want um, this one being too overblown for our needs. And we'll just drop this back to along 15%. Okay, so watch this box when I scrub through. Lightwave's native um, textures, or their procedural textures, generally will animate over time with this type of function whereas the third party ones generally don't have that capability hopefully in the integration process this is something that we will get um, so we can get previews of all these boxes uh, as the procedural textures are being driven over time uh, very very good way to visualize exactly what's going on with the texture if you have a lot of stuff going on uh, for a flow uh, let's just demonstrate what that looks like with the bypass and you can see a very similar pattern taking place in this mesh. Let's go to 25% here. You can see a very similar pattern taking place on top of the mesh. While we're dragging through and scrubbing through the timeline. So a great visual indicator. Unfortunately, for now, some of these tools don't have that capability, but a lot of the other ones do. Okay, let's say this is all fun and dandy. Let's rewire this so that we've got our proper displacements going on now. And we want to bake this out to an MDD or a motion, data, motion designer data file, a standard function in Lightwave uh, that we've had for a very, very long time and pretty much every single program on the planet that does vertex cache handling will accept an MDD file with very, very few exceptions. Okay, so let's say we want one of those. Let's go back to our stack here and we're gonna go and add a modifier called MB Baker. So we're going to bake this out. This is the light wave native baker. Okay, we're going to give this location. So we're going to bake it to this file here. Okay, and we're going to make sure that it overwrites it. All right, and we're going to cook it out. 
and I believe that gives us our 240 frames. So let's turn this baker off. Oh, well, we, we've actually baked out the reference object rather than the null. So this isn't going to give us anything. This is going to give us uh, basically a displacement for the null. And that doesn't work with MDD. So let's make sure that we've got the proper object selected and do the same thing. Okay, so MD baker, boom, boom. And we're going to go to... This file here, give it a cook, boom, boom, all right, and we can go back into this stack here, and we can now go to Dennis's list or DP kit displacement, and we can go and add a DP cache, and this is a much more advanced um, MDD cache player for lightweight than the original native one. Um, we'll get into a demonstration of just some of that in a second. Um, let's go and make sure this delta is plugged into here just by passing our displacement uh, via the procedural textures. And now we can see that when we play this back, we've got this animated, but it's using the MDD file instead. So let's take a look at um, some of the other options here. One of the great functions with this is that we can do things like playback speed minus one you can play it in reverse you can slow it down to like 0.5 um, and there are of course functions on the actual node that will allow you to work with other tools such as scalar uh, tools let's go scale which will give you control over an envelope so if you want to wire it in for time and then change this over a period of, of uh, you know, two or three seconds or have this envelope actually set to zero. And then somewhere around um, the 120 frame range, do another one, 120, 130, so it's a value of one, uh, have this MDD start to play. You can do stuff like this. Okay, so let's play it back. You can get it to do very, very cool things with envelope controls off that time input. Very awesome stuff. So um, these types of functions are now available to you. And you know, if necessary, if you want more displacement uh, or some other arrangement, say you want um, uh, an additional modifier under here with more morphic, uh, this is now possible. Um, of course, certain displacement order only makes sense with certain plugins in this stack, but you can go in after the fact here and do another uh, layer of displacement with additional tools because we do have this displacement stack. Of course, it has to make sense to do that that way, but pretty much um, any of those options are, are available to you now. So now I can get a MDD file that's been displaced by another tool after the fact. Very, very cool stuff. Let's just keep this um, uh, going to linear. And change to linear. So things like starting and stopping MDD files, having control over them with additional nodes, you can use logic functions to this. All radically changes a lot of different things that you can uh, do with Lightwave in a more sense rather than making things more complicated. It's actually easier to do things now than it was years ago before this type of stuff was integrated. Uh, Dennis's tools also have the capability of getting us to a certain place uh, that we couldn't do natively. But now that they're integrated, um, there's that much more that's opened up in terms of what can be done. And as a result, we've got this displacement stack, which um, gives us 
potential for possibilities that are absolutely impossible otherwise. And I'd be bold to say um, next to impossible in other software, no matter how high end or open source that is. All right, so uh, that's just a quick demonstration of what some of these new tools can do in combination with the Lightweight 2025 update. If you're just coming back to the software from uh, being away from it, say you were in the 11 or 15 cycle or even earlier, uh, some of this stuff might feel very familiar to you. Some of it, though, might seem like a total head scratch. But um, don't worry. The uh, community is here to help you, and we are obviously uh, very keen to have you guys back. And we also welcome new users, of course. So if you have questions, please make sure you join us on uh, the Discord forums and on the Facebook groups. Facebook groups. So um, we'll see you soon, and we'll be back in another video.